There is a case, and I'm looking for it right now. Here it is. There is a case of somebody who, when he was 11 years old, 11 years old, was accused of murder. He's now 13. And appeals judges today, yesterday, began considering whether this 13-year-old boy, he's now 13, but he was accused two years ago, accused of murder, could actually be tried as an adult and risk spending the rest of his life behind bars. Now, keep in mind, he was 11 years old when he was accused of this crime. And all crimes are heinous crimes by definition, some a lot worse than others. But let me tell you about this. This is coming out of Pennsylvania. And remember that Pennsylvania was the state that not too long ago had to shut down that fake juvenile crime facility. Remember those two judges that should spend the rest of their lives rotting in jail but got out without a jail penalty? They got out with their pensions intact. It was so disgusting. Remember that case of that judge who made a deal with that uh, sheriff and they were sending all these kids to jail that didn't belong there and they were taking money on the side? It was the most disgusting betrayal of anybody's sense of morals or ethics that I'd ever heard of in my life. And the two of them should be rotting in jail. And instead, they both got to keep their pensions and they got to be released. It was it's beyond appalling. You can look it up on Google. I don't have the, the people's names right in front of me, but it was it was such a vomit of a case. It made me sick to my stomach. Well, this is the same state. So you wonder about juvenile justice there. That's all I'm saying. You just wonder. So here's what happened. Here's what happened. Uh, He was 11 years old. And by the way, he has always said he didn't do it. In fact, Pennsylvania's chief deputy attorney general said no one tried to force a guilty plea on the boy. But he is saying from the beginning that he never pled guilty and he's always maintained his innocence. If you look at a picture of him, he was 11 years old, described as a chubby schoolboy when he allegedly shot a woman named Kenzie Hook, H-O-U-K. She was eight months pregnant and she was shot in the back of the head in February 2009 in her rural home in northwest of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. The prosecutors say the boy waited until his father left for work that morning before entering her bedroom and shooting her with a 20-gauge shotgun. After that, prosecutors say he went to school, he dropped the spent cartridge outside, and he left the daughter, who was four years old, to discover the scene by herself. Last year, a local judge ruled that Brown, his last name is Brown, should stand trial as an adult for what is considered the double murder of Hook and her near full, and her near full term baby son. But he has been in custody for two years since, and this case is drawing attention to how children are handled in the American criminal justice system. Human rights group Amnesty International has campaigned to overturn the lower court judge's ruling, saying it is deeply disturbed, deeply disturbed, that if this ruling goes forward, the boy will never see the light of day again. I, too, am deeply disturbed. I feel that this is ipso facto, prima facie, an unfair result. An 11-year-old can never be tried as an adult. I'm sorry. It may have been the worst, heinous, horrible crime in the world. It's a developing brain. It's not the same mental state. It cannot be the same mens rea. It cannot be the same motivation. It cannot be the same state of adulthood in which we put culpability and blame on adults that we do not do for children. An 11-year-old is not an 18-year-old. An 11-year-old is not a 30-year-old. An 11-year-old is not an adult. There was a similar case like this with that poor boy in Florida. Do you recall this? I think he was 13 at the time, and he was accused of murdering an 8-year-old girl, or she was 8 or 6, because he was wrestling with her too hard, and she basically died. She hit her head and died. And whether it was reckless endangerment or murder, it didn't matter. They wanted to try him as an adult. Eventually, they found by the age of 17 or so or 18 that he couldn't be tried as an adult. But by then, he had been incarcerated in the worst kind of facilities in Florida as a full adult murderer. And when he came out, he was really a full-blown criminal. And it was really, really sad. They say the prognosis for this young man is terrible. He already had gotten into petty theft and crimes, and he was already back in jail. I don't know the mental state of this boy. Let's assume for the state of argument he's guilty. He says he's not guilty, which is huge. But let's assume for the state of argument he's, 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 not, he's guilty. He's lying. He's guilty. And he's the worst possible juvenile delinquent that ever was. Number one, who the hell gave him access to a 20-gauge shotgun? He's 11 years old. 
Hello, hello, hello. Any culpability of any adults out there? What do you think? What do you think? Any culpability of anybody else giving access to a 20-gauge shotgun to an 11-year-old? That's number one. Number two, he's 11 years old. 11-year-olds, you know, boys and girls, but especially boys, are very immature. Their feelings, their emotions are out of whack. Very often they're starting puberty 11, 12 years old, which totally throws them over. They cannot be held accountable and they cannot be held blameworthy in the same respect as an adult. It is wrong, pure and simple. These kind of cases really, really bother me because they speak to injustice in America. And injustice in America is all over the place. It's all over the place. And you don't need to be a bleeding hard liberal or call me any kind of names and labels to understand that 11-year-old boys should not be treated the same as adults for purposes of criminal liability and penalty. That's the way I feel about it. But where the hell does he come off getting a 20-gauge shotgun? I, you know, I know that a lot of young boys at that point are learning how to use weapons. They're supposed to be locked up when they're not under supervision of an adult. Am I right or not right? Can you call me if you're a responsible gun owner and tell me would you ever have allowed your 11-year-old access to a gun without you being there? Because I know from responsible gun owners that one of the reasons they want to have all their rights and they don't want the government impinging on their rights is because their argument is that people kill people, not guns. Well, people have to have a responsibility when guns are around 11-year-olds. He may have hated this woman. I'm just assuming for the sake of argument it's alleged he's saying he's innocent, but let's say he did kill her and he's lying. He may have hated this woman. She may have taken the place of his mother in his brain. She was pregnant with his father's child, for all I know. They don't really say in, in, the, in the facts of the case whether or not she was eight months pregnant with the dad's child or not. Presumably they were living together. He may have absolutely hated her. Where is the father? Where is anybody... Where is anybody taking notice of what's going on in the house? These things don't happen overnight. This is not an impulsive thing for a child. If he hated her, you don't keep a gun around. Anyway, it's very upsetting to me to see these cases because it's not an isolated incident. We're doing this again and again and again. We don't let 18-year-olds drink a beer on campus, but we're putting 11-year-olds incarcerated for the rest of their life. There is something seriously wrong with the way we're looking at our youth. We're, we're becoming a nation of extremes where we don't understand moderation. Okay? 18 years old, you can go to the Army, you can vote, you should be able to have a beer on a college campus. They should bring the things back to colleges so there can be some supervision and not so much binge drinking on college campuses. The reason they're binging is because it's forbidden fruit. Hello, hello, hello. Knock on the door. We've allowed the car insurance companies to control the agenda for our youth, and it's wrong. That's where it came from. It came from the car insurance companies. They said, we won't allow you to insure unless you go with no drinking below 21. So we have excesses of behavior now. Now that they don't have in Europe and they don't have elsewhere where there's a moderate understanding that you can have a glass of wine, you can have a beer, you can have two or three, you can get drunk the first time and throw up and not drink again for six months. But they didn't have the kind of exit. They, I'm telling you, because when I went to college, you were allowed to have a drink. We had rascalers on campus. Big deal. Sure, there were a couple of kids that abused it like everything else, but not every party had to be held at a frat house because there was no place to socialize on a college campus. And that's what we've turned into. So we look at our youth now as either completely formed adults at 11 years old or infantile at 18. There is something seriously wrong with our society. And we're raising a generation of kids that are very fragile, that are getting messages and signals from all sides. You're too old. You're too young. You're too old. You're too young. Where's the right amount of responsibility that we're supposed to be giving these kids so they grow up to be independent, self-sufficient, self-regarding adults? We're not doing it right. We're not doing it right. Well, I'm still very head up about the state of the way we treat our youth that is described as criminals and the way that we treat the rest of our youth, which we treat as possible criminals in terms of the way we coddle them about certain things and give them freedom that they shouldn't have about others. And I'm talking, of course, about moderate alcohol consumption, which, by the way, hello, you know, I'm a teetotaler. It's not like I, you know, I'm sitting here with my gin and tonic. And, and the reason I'm a teetotaler is because my father gave me a sip of scotch at eight years old 
world. And that was all I needed to do to never have it again. So parents out there, if you want your kids to never have an uh, acquire a taste for liquor, do what my father did. I thought they were all dressed up at this glamorous dinner party they were giving at our house and would be. I'll never forget. I can remember it like yesterday. And they had one of these old fashioned like tea tables set out with liquor on them, you know, like this bar cart, you'd call it. And I never seen liquor before in the house anyway, but it was a very glamorous, exciting time. You're talking in the late sixties. My parents looked beautiful. I was maybe eight or nine years old. And I said to my father, there was this golden yellow liquid that he was holding with ice. And I said, Oh daddy, can I taste that? And he said, sure. And I had a sip and I went, "Ah, what is that? He said, it's scotch. That was it. Never had hard liquor again. Can you believe that's true? Never acquired a taste for hard liquor. And, you know, I'm not exactly, I don't even like beer or wine. So, you know, I'm not the one to say, oh, it's because Lisa the Lush is telling us to drink. I just think common sense. And by the way, a sophisticated, a sophisticated person knows that throughout the world, very often children in many communities around the world are taught to enjoy and appreciate small sips of wine at young ages. And then as they become 16 or 17 or 18, some of them are even have a palate that acquires a taste for the right kind of wine with the right kind of meal. Again, small sips here and there, understanding that as you become an adult, you know, your tastes can be more sophisticated. And if you learn how to do something in moderation, you are less likely to do it in excess as you get older. That's just the truth of it. And anyway, so we coddle our youth in one way, not letting them have a drink till they're 18, forcing them to get fake IDs to go to dance clubs at 19, 20 years old. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. We infantilize them. And then on the other hand, we blame an 11-year-old kid and accuse him of first-degree murder like an adult, and we want to incarcerate him for the rest of his life, assuming he's done the crime, when his father is the one that gave him access to a 20-gauge shotgun to begin with. So who's really at fault? Who's really at fault? 